Hey, uh, you're American, ain't you? You know, I can tell by your sunglasses and camera. Ooh, I'll bet that cost a packet. Now, 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 listen, don't run off, huh? I want to warn you about a bloody epidemic that's about to break out over there in America. Yeah, it goes by the name of F.C. Collins. Uncle F.C.R. calls him because it gives him a grim and nasty look, and because he's got a nasty habit of packing people's heads in his hat boxes. Now, now, don't run off. No, I swear on me, dear old Mum Stone, every word I say is true. Now, nobody will believe me over here, but I swear it's true, all right. And the worst part is, the next part of the epidemic could be you. Theater 5 presents The Trouble with Alfie. It was all very well at our house until Uncle F.C. came along. Started one morning when I come down to breakfast late as usual. F.C. was there swilling down his share of kippers and tea and... Of course, Mom fixing breakfast. Every evening at half past five, to shit away most potters. Ah, come along, Alfie. Oh, I goes down to the waxwork show and I sits in the chamber of horrors. Well, what took you so long? Well, I was watching a green horse flying back and forth outside me window. A green horse flying? That's right. And I suppose there was a man riding him. Well, how did you know, Uncle F.C.? No. Ah. The boy's completely dark. Oh, Alfie, eat your breakfast. You never saw no such thing. Oh, I did so. You saw a green house fly like as not. No, no, it was an horse, not an house. Ah, cheeky bounder. Yeah, why couldn't it be? Now, if there's green and there's horses and green horse flies, why couldn't there be a green flying horse? And I suppose the man riding him was wearing a pink hat. Well, you put the hat on him, F.C. You cheeky lad. Learn to keep a civil tongue in your head. He's completely daft, Bess. Oh, never mind. Eat your breakfast, love. You'll be late for school. No, I ain't going to school today, Mum. Oh? And why not? Because today's the day they're blowing up Buckingham Palace. Blimey. Well, it's the truth. Now tell me, my dear Lord, horsefly expert, just what makes you think they're planning to do in old Buckingham today? I didn't say they would. I only said they could if they'd a mind to. The guards don't do nothing but stand there looking either to the right or left with their bearskins pulled down over their eyes all day. Yeah, a chap could slip up next to him just as quick as you please and put a whole shoebox full of atomic bombs next to him and blow the queen to kingdom come before anybody knew what they was about. Now he's blowing up Buckingham Palace. Oh, I didn't say that. I only said they could if they'd a mind to. Hey, you mark my words, Bessie. This daft lad of yours with his wacky imagination will have the old neighborhood in that uproar if you don't teach him his facts from his fancy. First, it's green flying horses, then it's Buckingham Palace. Next thing you know, he'll be saying off, I've got heads in me hat boxes upstairs. Well, you do have heads in your hat boxes upstairs. What? Boxes and boxes of heads with horrible grins above their chins, and nobody at all below where their necks should be. Oh, Alfie! Oh, it's true enough, Mum. He's got all sorts of human parts filed away up there, all neatly done up in packages and filed away in cross index. Alfie! There now. You see what I'm saying? Now, Alfie, you must never say a thing like that. Never. Well, why not? Why not? Now, it's... It's true enough. All right, it's all very well to go about talking of green flying horses and even Buckingham Palace, if you like. But you must never say your poor Uncle Fred has human parts either way upstairs. It'll upset the neighbours. But he does, Mum. Alfie, your Uncle Fred has nothing up there but trinkets and lovely curios from his travels and... Some trinkets. Alfie? Yes, Mum. We'll have no more of it. If it was me, I'd lay him up alongside the head from time to time. Oh, oh, come now. Nobody pays any attention to the poor boy. Everybody knows what an extra rich imagination he has. Imagination, me eye. Now, you're not to touch him, Fred. Knocking him about the head would only serve to addle his brain more than it is. I'm not sure. Oh, if anybody's to lay end on him, it'll be his father. And why ain't he down here, doing his fatherly duty? Well, because he's... Oh, he's a touch under the weather. <laughs> Likely. 
dead drunk like as not. Now, Fred, he's not hurting anybody. It's a public disgrace that any sister of mine should be married to an habitual inebriate. Well, it ain't that way. It's criminal. That's what it is. If our dear old mum would have known how he takes advantage of you, she'd have left this lodging house to me, as she intended to all along. Well, there's nothing to be done about it now, Fred. Oh, yes, there is. Uncle F.C. plans to do something about it. Huh? What's that? He plans to do our dear old dad in. Alfie, I've just told you. Then why did he say dad wants taking apart and filing away for future reference? I never said that. Oh, yes, you did. Just yesterday to Mrs. Siddons across the street. Huh? Did, did, did you say that to Mrs. Siddons? Oh, never. Oh, yes, you did. I listened from behind the coal scuttle in her basement. You were in the basement. Now, you see there, Mommy admits it. Now, I didn't want to tell you before, but while they were talking, I sneaked up to his room. He's got a little black book up there locked away with names in it uh, about the day the person died and how he looked when he passed away. Now, after every name, he's got their locks and dislocks. Uh, I guess so he can serve them right. And the last name's our dear old dad's name, and after it, he's got sometime soon pickling alcohol. That's it. I've had it. And now, Fred, sit down. I'm not going to sit around and let this little blighter make a mockery of me. I'm finding new lodgings. Oh, That's come what on, I'm doing. Fred, no, Fred, I finish your tea. Come on. Well, you know Alfie doesn't mean a thing he says. Oh, like Do it. you, love? Yes, Mum. Alfie, you mustn't say things like that about your Uncle Fred. It isn't half nice. And, and you've gone and hurt his feelings. But, Mum, it's true. But that isn't the point. No. The point is that you'll be frightening people after death saying things like that. Talk about green flying horses all you like. But don't talk about blowing up the Queen or people filing away human parts upstairs. But, Mum... You wouldn't like your Uncle Fred to take you to task, would you, Ducks? No, Mum. Ah, there's a good lad. Now, run along to school. And don't be hanging around Buckingham Palace again all day today. Yeah, all right, Mum. Well, goodbye, Uncle F.C. I hope you can find somebody else to do in besides me dear old dad. Alfie! Come back here, you... It was all very well at our house after that until our dear old dad disappeared. My dad was gone almost a fortnight before anybody missed him. And a good deal longer than that before anything was done about it. Ah, oh, Constable. I'm so glad you're here. All right, all right, now, man. What seems to be amiss? Well, it's it's my husband. He's, he's disappeared. Oh, I know that. But where to, do you suspect? Probably in a local ditch. Dead drunk, like as not. Fred, I, I keep trying to tell you. He's never been gone this long. Generally, he finds his way home as soon as his money runs out. Uh, it's been more than a month now. More than a month. That's right. What's the missing person's name? Oh, Dodds. Thomas Dodds. And where was he last seen? Headed for the Prince Philip pub. No, 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 he wasn't either. He was last seen in me Uncle F.C.'s room in a barrel of rubbing alcohol. Alfie! It's true, Mum. Hello, hello, hello. What's this? Oh, it's me son Alfie, Constable. Don't pay any mind to him. He's, he's got a terrible overactive imagination. It ain't either my imagination. F.C.'s got an old collection of heads in his hat boxes upstairs with various expressions on their faces. Yes, me dear old dad's wearing a smile. Oh, the boy's completely daft. Is he now, huh? Uh, tell me, lad, how do you know all this? Yeah, oh, because I nipped up and had a look for myself. Alfie! Well, offhand, I'd say this room wants looking into. I think hmm. I can explain it, officer. I, I do have a shrunken head up there. I, I picked it up in my travels to the West Indies. I showed it to the boy one day, thinking to impress him, and completely forgetting what an... Overactive imagination he has. Yes, yes. Well, in that case, it uh, won't hurt if we have a look, eh? By all means, officer. Uh, right this way. Uh, the trouble with Alfie is, he says the first thing that comes into his head. Uh, it, it would seem that way. Oh, he's got some wonderful things to look at up there. He's got a whole collection of rings that would knock your eye out. 
Oh, I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I've seen my share of jewellery in my day. <laughs> I've, I've guarded the crown jewels, you know. Oh, is that so? Yeah, well, I'll bet you've never seen any rings with the fingers still in them. Oh, Alfie! Just... Well, it's true. I swear it's true. And if it's a lady's finger, he keeps the nail polished a quad regular, he does. Keeps the nail polished? That's right, that's right. Oh, me boy, I think you're pulling my leg. Yeah, well, I'm not. I swear I'm not. <laughs> Next thing you'll be saying is sweet old Mrs. Siddons across the street is a witch. Well, she is. You know she is, F.C. What? Well, only yesterday she sold Uncle F.C. two pounds of dried native ears for three bob. And a hex on a queen of England. Oh, that does it. Well, now, wait, wait, wait. wait. Ain't you going to have a look in F.C.'s room? Oh, I should say not. But he's got ours in there to curl your hair. The only hair curling to be done around here is with your tongue. Yeah, but, 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 I've got I... enough trouble on my beat Oof. just filling out the missing persons reports without going on a uh, witch hunt. For my part, seeing his dear old dad's not around, I recommend his uncle take this cheeky tad in hand before he has the old neighbourhood in an uproar. I guess it's the only thing to do. Yeah, well, I think the whole idea stinks. Quiet, you. This is no concern of yours. Well, I guess it's my concern if you do us all in. Alfie! Mom can't just see it. He plans to have this lodging house all to himself so he can carry on his work unlimited like. Oh, now, Fred would never do a thing like that. No, only first chance he gets. Now, listen here, you. You're not to speak unless you're spoken to. <laughs> you don't know what the truth is anyway. Now, Mum... Just when was the last time you saw your husband? Well, he was heading for the Prince Philip pub. Well, it all went very well at our house for a while again. Until dear old Mum found herself in the soup. It happened one rainy afternoon. I'd snuck up to F.C.'s room, as was my want, when who should I find trust up to the end of the bed? Need as you please. But dear old Mum... Oh, hello, Mum. Yeah, I knew you'd wind up here soon enough. What's oh, R- Rope's a little tight. Oh, the, the, the tape over your mouth. Well, I, I guess I could loosen that a bit for you then. Oh, oh Alfie. Alfie, I'm so glad you're here. Your Uncle Fred's planning to do me in. Yeah, I know. You, you do? Well, I've been telling you that for weeks, but you wouldn't listen. I wouldn't. Oh, oh, that's right, I wouldn't. Well, now, be a good lad and nip over to the neighbours and tell them what a pickle I'm in. No, I, I, I can't do that. Why not? Well, they'd never believe me. You've seen to that. Oh, oh that's right. Well, well, stick your head out of the window and give an olive for the bobby. Well, the bobby won't believe me either. Oh, bobby, that's right. Yes. We've got to do something. Your uncle will be right back. He said he was just stepping out to the apothecary shop for half a minute. He's probably after aspirins. He said he had a bit of an headache. Oh, quick. Untie me, love. I'll shake a few people up. No, I'm afraid I can't do that, Mum. Why not? Well, Uncle F.C. will only do me in for setting you loose. You mean you're not going to help your dear old Mum? Well, I'd love to, Ducks, but that'd only mean two of us instead of one. Oh, but... He'll only get you in the end, you know that. No, 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 no. He doesn't dare. We've talked about that. I'm his alibi. See, he's going to tell the Bobbies you got a card from Scotland from dear old Dad, and you've run off to look for him. He's only watching me for your safe return. But you, you're not going to leave your poor old mum alone like this. You know, I'm afraid I have to, Mum. You, you... You've attended to that. You told everybody not to believe me, and now nobody does. Alfie. Love. This is your mum. Yeah, I know, Ducks, and I love you for it, but... Stiff up a lip and all that, huh? I've got to think of number one. <laughs> now, j- j- just a moment, just a moment. Here's dear old Dad in his hat box here to give you a bit of company. <laughs> Alfie! Yeah, yeah, now, what's all the ruckus about? Oh, hello, uh, F.C. I've uh, only took the tape off Mom's mouth so uh, we could have a bit of a chat. Well, put it back on. She'll have every bobby in London here before long. Yeah, I'm, uh, sorry, Mom. Alfie! Oh, uh, here we are. <laughs> Say, uh, F.C., uh, you wouldn't happen to have three and six on you, would you? I thought I'd hop over to the cinema and catch a flick this afternoon. Three and six. That's a bit steep for just the pictures, ain't it? Well, I thought I'd pick up a pack of fags on me way. All right, very well. Off with you now. Ah, good lad. I've got work to do. And don't be telling tales out of school. Oh, don't worry about me. Uh, cheerio, Mum. <laughs> Of course, it was only a question of time before my turn came, so I had to be prepared for him. 
Yeah, the day before, I read me name in his little black book. So he had it in code, all right, but he made the mistake of putting the notations after me name in English. Locks, picture shows, and cigarettes. Alfie. Hmm? It occurred to me the other day that I have every sort of person in my collection upstairs, but I don't have any little boys your size. Oh, that's a pity, F.C. You uh, don't have anyone in mind that I might know. Well, now I do. Oh, I was I afraid. rather thought you might look nice added to the archives, so to speak. Oh, well, I'd be happy to oblige, F.C., but if I'm gone, who would you have for an alibi? Oh, I've given it some thought. And I'll tell everybody your dear old mum and dad sent you enough money to join them in Scotland. Now, wasn't that thoughtful of them? I thought it was. Yes, yes. I bet. Well, then, of course, this lodging house would be mine. And I can assure you, I'd have a right healthy turnover of lodgers. Well, there's only one thing wrong with your plan, F.C. And what's that? You see this band the bomb pin I've been wearing on me shirt of late? Why, well, yes, I have noticed that. I didn't know you had a political turn of mind, Alfie. Well, I don't. Mrs. Siddons across the street gave it to me. You'll notice it has a right sharp point here. Why, well, yes, I... Say... Oh, I... <laughs> now, what did you stick me with it for? Because that's where all the poison is. The, the, what? Now, if I was you, Uncle F.C., I'd get myself over to Mrs. Siddons what? within the next five minutes because she's the only one I know who's got an antidote. You're lying to me. Now, if I'm lying to you, you'd best get your blades down and commence to work because you ain't going to have the proper time to get me stuffed and mounted the way you like. Uh, you're, you're lying. You lie to everyone. Oh, you like... should know better than anybody. I've never told a lie in my life. Now, listen now. Now, I may make things a bit more exciting than they really are, or stretch an absurdity to its logical conclusion, but I've never told a lie. Don't you And at what? the heart of everything I've ever said, there's always been a kernel of truth. You're lying. You're trying to get me out of the house so you can get away. Well, now, if that's the case, then why are you worried? Well, I, I... Ah, but the truth of the matter is your eyelids are already getting heavy. And there's a dryness in your throat. I... Mrs. Siddons! Mrs. Siddons! Oh, needless to say, I nipped out of there as soon as he was gone. It was the only lie I ever told in me life, and I wasn't taking no chances. I called Mrs. Siddons from a public phone and told her what was up. I also mentioned that her name was next on Uncle F.C.'s list. So, needless to say, she tipped off the police. Being a full-time witch, she could do it better than me because she kept a respectful front. Say, maybe you read about it in the Penny Press at the time. Oh, they had a grand time of it for a while, piecing all the bodies together and solving crimes past. Yes, it kept a serious thought out of anybody's head for weeks. But they never did catch F.C., though, and that's why I can't go back. Well, I heard from a one-eyed man that sells papers under the bridge that Uncle F.C. booked passage for America. And I wish I knew for sure if he did. And yeah, they'll never find him over there if he did. Because they don't care so much over there what you do. So long as you don't upset anybody by what you say while you're doing it. But what's the sense of my wasting my breath... I can see by the expression on your face you don't believe a word I said. Nobody does. Theater 5 has presented The Trouble with Alfie, written by George Bamber and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Jack Grimes, Bryna Rayburn, James Monks, and Ian Martin. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, M.C. Brock. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York, 23, New York.
This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.